Formula One is back in China. Look at that. Isn't that nice? China, 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 Bing, 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 Bing. I love China. I love China. In fact, in preparation for the Chinese Grand Prix, I've been learning Mandarin, which apparently is one of the hardest languages to learn. But don't worry, because here are 12 F1 related phrases and how to pronounce them in Chinese. Yellow flag in Chinese is pronounced something wong. Something wong. Black and white flag is pronounced yu chi ting. Yu Chi Ting. Ferrari strategy is pronounced engine go bang bang. Engine go bang bang. Sauber pit stop. How come so long? How come so long? George Russell is. A, I'm not making any of these up. Yes, I am. George Russell is about to go for an overtake on the final lap of the race. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Max Verstappen complains about his tires and then sets the fastest lap of the race. Why you lying? Why you lying? Hashtag Team LH is pronounced retardation. You fucking spastic. Christian Horner has sent you a picture on WhatsApp. I show you my ding dong. Disgusting! Toto Wolf is pronounced table banger. <laughs> Yuki Tsunoda is pronounced tiny Japan man. Tiny Japan man. Guan Yu Zhou is pronounced Guan Yu Zhou. China! And Lance Stroll is dumb fuck. Dumb fuck! Hello! I'm dumb fuck! <laughs> right. Right, I'm, de I'm definitely gonna have to edit that one out. China all the time. Can we be serious, please? Right, can we be serious? Because it, it is very exciting that Formula One is back in China. China! Here are some fun China moments. Boemi's tyre-saving strategy. At the 2010 Chinese Grand Prix, Sebastian Boemi was approaching the Turn 14 hairpin at over 200 miles per hour, before both of his front tyres yeeted themselves into oblivion. And what's funny is if you look at the onboard footage, even after both of his front tires have ceased to exist, he still tries steering out of the slide. The torpedo incident. At the 2016 Chinese Grand Prix, the two Ferraris crashed into each other at the first corner. Sebastian Vettel came on the radio and said it was Danny Kvyat who came down the inside like a madman. Okay, I made contact. I had no chance to avoid. I had the Red Bull coming on the inside like a madman. However, if you look at the onboard footage, Danny didn't do anything wrong. He sent it down the inside into the first corner, stays on the inside line, and it was actually a combination of Vettel getting a snap of oversteer and Kimi Raikkonen squeezing from the outside that brought the two Ferraris together. After the race, Sebastian and Danny were in the cool-down room together where they had a robust exchange. You asking what happened at the start? If I don't go to the left, you crash into us and we all three go out. Well, I was... Oh, sorry. not well. You came, came like a torpedo. Well, it's racing. <laughs> And from that moment on, Danny Kvyat was known as the Torpedo, which I actually think is unfair, because like I said, this incident wasn't really his fault. He did Torpedo Vettel out of the race at the Russian Grand Prix, and that was a proper Torpedo. And he did a similar thing to Fernando Alonso at the Austrian Grand Prix. He just drove straight to the back of him, which pushed Fernando into Max Verstappen and took both of them out of the race. And then at the British Grand Prix, he tried to go side by side with his teammate, Carlos Sainz, through Maggots and Beckett's before torpedoing him out of the race. Okay, maybe calling him the torpedo is fair. <laughs> Alex Albon's comeback. At the 2019 Chinese Grand Prix, Albon twatted his car into the barriers in FP3, causing so much damage the car couldn't be repaired in time for qualifying and required a brand new chassis. So he had to start the race from the pit lane and saw the entire field disappear round turn one before he even joined the track. So things weren't looking too good. Boy, Danny the Torpedo Kvyat fucks it into 
both McLarens on the first lap. He was going down the inside into turn six with Lando and Carlos on the outside, gets a little snap of oversteer, clips Carlos's front right tire, that pitches the torpedo into the side of Lando Norris, who almost rolls over. Both of them end up sat in the pit lane waiting for repairs. Carlos needed a new front wing, and because they had some technical difficulties trying to get the bastard to come off, Lando lost so much time sat behind him in the pit lane that both of their races were basically over by the end of the first lap. All of this carnage meant that Alex Albon drove past Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz and up into P18 by the end of the first lap. He spent the rest of the race making his way through the field and ended up finishing 10th. A fine recovery drive with a little help from the torpedo. He needs some milk. The 1989 Tank Man. This historical photograph was taken in China. After the CCP massacred thousands of protesters, a fleet of tanks was leaving the Tiananmen Square before a man by the name of Wang Weilin stood in their path, forcing them to come to a halt. The FIA gave Wang a five second penalty for ignoring blue flags. Blue flags. Michael, this guy makes us lose the position. The Martin Brundle Chinaman controversy. At the Spanish Grand Prix last year, Guan Yu Zhou, who is Chinese, was fighting Nico Hulkenberg and Sushi Tanoda for 14th place. And while it was happening, Martin Brundle said this. As Yuki Tsunoda goes around the outside and Nico Hulkenberg might be under a bit of threat from the Alpha Tari. This is a brilliant scrap between these three. It is, isn't it? The German, the Chinaman, the man from Japan, the man from Finland's not too far away from them either. It's all going on back there. Very cosmopolitan race. <laughs> a German, a Chinaman, and a man from Japan. Apparently, the term Chinaman is problematic. And people were furious. Martin Brundle, racist comment. Chinaman referring to Zhou. Really? At Formula One, at Sky Sports News. Martin Brundle used the word Chinaman on describing Zhou. Would you do something about that? I thought racism was not acceptable in F1. Angry face emoji. That's ridiculous. For Martin Brundle to say such a word from his instinct. He is no longer my favourite commentator after this nonsense. Did Martin Brundle just say Chinaman WTF? Martin Brundle just said Chinaman on air in 2023. What the hell? Complaint response from Sky on Martin Brundle calling Gwen. They sent a strongly worded email. Uh, Michael, I just sent you an email. Did you receive that? Uh, Toto, I don't uh, access my emails during a race deliberately because I concentrate on the race. <laughs> Yes, Martin Brundle did not mean it in any malice, but if you don't understand the term Chinaman and how it is historically derogatory, I suggest you educate yourself. And no, it's not the same as saying Englishman or Frenchman. Well, all right, fair enough. That is actually a fair point. I, myself, as a strong, independent African-American trans woman, do not understand the Chinese experience. Unless that Chinese experience is delivered on a moped and is served with fortune cookies. But I also believe in accountability. So I agree Martin Brundle should be burned at the stake for his obvious hate crime. And please ignore everything I did at the start of this video. Dumb fuck! Hello, I'm Don Fuck. The Puis Hamilton Championship Critical Mistake. There were only two races left in the 2007 season, China and Brazil. Before the Chinese Grand Prix, Hamilton had a 12-point lead in the championship and was 17 points ahead of Kimi Raikkonen in third. And remember, these were the days where you only got 10 points for winning a race instead of the 25 they get now. So with only two races left and a 12-point lead, it looked like Lewis Hamilton was going to be the first ever rookie world champion. But then, on lap 30 of the Chinese Grand Prix, Hamilton dives into the pit lane, overshoots the entry, buries his car in the gravel, and retires. Kimi Raikkonen wins the Chinese Grand Prix with Fernando Alonso in second, cutting Hamilton's lead to just four points before the final race of the season. But that's still a solid lead, and Hamilton was still the favourite for the world championship, unless, you know, 
everything goes completely tits up at the final race of the season in Brazil. Well, guess what? At the final race of the season in Brazil, Hamilton locks up going into turn four on the first lap and drops down to eighth place. Then he suffers a gearbox problem and drops down to 18th. Is this the end of the world championship dream for Lewis Hamilton? He's got problems. He was in sixth place at the point when his engine started cutting out. It sounds okay now. He's down, we believe, in 18th place. So it's gone from bad to worse for Lewis Hamilton. Then McLaren pulled a Ferrari strategy by switching him to a three-stopper, costing him 28 seconds. But despite all of this, Hamilton managed to recover to seventh place, and that was almost enough. But with Kimi Raikkonen winning two races in a row at the end of the season, that meant Hamilton lost the championship by just a single point. So that mistake in China absolutely cost him the world championship. And thank Christ, hashtag Team LH weren't around in those days. Because what do you think the excuse would have been back then? Hashtag gravel is racist. Hashtag void gravel traps. Hashtag Mickey Mouse gravel trap. Remember when they called Max Verstappen Mickey Mouse world champion? Overshooting the pit lane, even on bald tires, is kind of a silly mistake to make at a critical championship moment. It's almost as bad as, I don't know, on the final lap of the race, you leave the door wide open for your opponent to dive down the inside on fresher tires. Obviously, I'm trying to trigger Team LH, but also, I've watched this clip a thousand times, and I I still don't understand why you left the door open. That seems like a silly mistake at a critical championship moment. So Formula One is back in the CCP and it's a sprint race and it's on at four o'clock in the morning, you little bastards. That's three races in a row now that have been on at unreasonable times. The Australian Grand Prix was on at four o'clock in the morning. The Japanese Grand Prix was on at 6 a.m. And now we have to get out of bed at 4 a.m. just for the pissing sprint. I'm going to move to China. I'm going to move to the CCP so all of these flyaway races are on at reasonable times. Do you think they'll let me into China? Probably not. After this video, my social credit score is now minus 100,000. Hello, I'm done. <laughs>